Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of tower, power, and with signs and wonders, and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 91. We will read it responsibly. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. 
You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, all will be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So we begin the season of Lent with Ash Wednesday. Remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. We hear these words as we're marked with ashes on our foreheads. And it's done to remind us of our creator God. It's done to remind us whose we are. And this first Sunday in Lent, we hear the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Just before this passage, keep in mind, is the story of Jesus' baptism, where we heard God say, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And this is important to the story of Jesus' temptation. Why? Because at its heart, it's a story about identity. 
And that is crucial to how Jesus, and how we, for that matter, navigate temptation, and therefore, how we navigate our lives. When push comes to shove, all the various temptations we may encounter stem from the primary temptation to forget whose we are, and therefore to forget who we are. Because once you don't remember who you are and whose you are, you'll do all kinds of things to dispel the insecurity that's present in any human life. And you'll do all kinds of things to find that sense of security and acceptance that you feel is essential to being happy. The devil also tries to undermine Jesus' relationship with God by suggesting that it's not secure, that he should test it by throwing himself off the pinnacle, or that he should go his own way by creating food for himself, or that he should seek the protection and patronage of the devil rather than trust God's provision. The devil is presenting Jesus with worldly power, which is in reality a fleeting power. At each point, Jesus resists, not simply by quoting scripture in general, but by quoting scripture that reminds him of God's trustworthiness, the need to depend on God for all good things, and consequently, of God's promise to care for all of God's children. Jesus falls back on his relationship with God, reminding himself whose he is, and so remembering who he is, a dependent but beloved child of God, dependent on the providence care and protection of the God who has promised to do anything to care for him and all of us. At his baptism, Jesus hears the bottom line truth about his identity. He is God's son, precious and beloved. But when the spirit leads him into the wilderness, he has to face a series of powerful assaults on that truth. He has to learn how to discern God's presence in a bleak and lonely wasteland. He has to trust that he can be beloved and famished, valued and vulnerable at the same time. He has to learn that God's care resides within his flesh and blood humanity, within a fragile vessel that can crack and shatter. And there's ancient wisdom found in having seasons of the church. Lent is the season set aside as a period of self-examination, and it's based on this story of Jesus' retreat to the wilderness, the desert. With the waters of baptism still clinging to him, Jesus enters the wilderness, where for 40 days and 40 nights he fasts and prays. Son of God he may be, but here at the outset of his ministry, he needs this liminal space, this in-between space, to deepen his clarity and prepare him for what lies ahead. In this harsh landscape, Jesus comes to a vivid knowing about who he is and what's essential to his ministry. You know, we are all essentially artists involved in the construction of our own world. So how do we draw our world? How do we construct our landscape? That's the question that the desert gives us. What are we doing here? Not just, what are you doing here in this physical space, but also, what are you doing here in life? How do you feed your soul? What do you feed your soul in order to construct your life? Sometimes it takes going into the wilderness, the landscape of body or of soul, to find the answer to these questions stepping over the threshold into a different space and time, traveling where the familiar contours of our life disappear, leaving the landmarks behind, the people and patterns and possessions that orient us. That's where Jesus goes. You know, sometimes music can take us to that liminal space, that in-between space. John O'Donohue and Krista Tippett were once talking about the music of Ireland, O'Donohue shares, one of the things I'm always amazed about Irish music, for instance, is how in some way the lines of the landscape find their way into the music, the memory of the landscape almost, the memory of the people too, and that in some sense, despite the sorrow that we've endured. 
I mean, Ireland has hundreds of years of an awful history of suffering. And you hear that in the music. You hear that even in the fast music, the light gay music, the celebratory music. You hear the undertones of the quiet spaces where the echo of this hauntedness comes through. And yet, it's inextricably linked with exuberance and vitality. And I know friends of mine who play, and when they play, they're unreachable. You can't find them. They're serving the music. They're just in another place. So what are you doing here? At the outset of the Lenten journey, why are you where you are? What do you need from the 40-day place that this season offers? Is there a wilderness you need to enter with your body or with your soul or with both in order to gain clarity at this point in your life? And what might that look like? To quote Debbie Thomas, we are the children of a God who accompanies us in our suffering, not a God who guarantees us a life of immunity. Why is this good news? It's good news because we are also the children of a God who resurrects. There is no suffering we will ever endure that God will not redeem. The story of humanity is not a story that ends in despair. It's a story that culminates at an empty tomb in a kingdom of hope, healing, consolation, and joy. What does this mean for us as we begin our Lenten journeys this year? Maybe it means it's time to follow Jesus into the desert. It's time to stay and look evil in the face. Time to hear evil's voice, recognize its allure, and confess its appeal. It's time to decide who we are and whose we are. Remember, Lent is not a time to do penance for being human. It's a time to embrace all that it means to be human. Human and hungry, human and vulnerable, but also human and beloved. So as you travel into this Lenten landscape, may you find what you most need. May you receive the gift you never expected. May you find strength in those who have journeyed there before you. And may angels attend your way. Blessings. Amen. Let us recite an affirmation of our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You're invited to join me in the prayers of the people. 
In this holy season, let us turn to God in prayer, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the catechumens and for all holy people of God, that we may be led by spirit to hunger for the word of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples and nations of the world, for those in the authority, that power and glory may not turn us from the way of justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are afflicted and oppressed, that God will open our ears to their cry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, that we may believe in our hearts and confess with our lips the word that is near, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and those of others, especially those affected by the coronavirus, and those listed here that are near to our hearts, and when those we now name silently or out loud. That God may be gracious to us in our need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who protect and serve as well as their families, the police, the firefighters, emergency medical personnel, and those serving in the military, especially those listed here that are near to our hearts, and those we name silently or out loud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish family celebrating birthdays this week, Tony Wilson, Chris Hawk, and Millie Kovaleski, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In you, O God, do we put our trust. We entrust to you our dead, especially Evelyn E. Shanley, for whom the altar flowers are given, because you alone are our refuge and salvation. You alone are mighty to save. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Strong and faithful God, hear us as we cry to you. Stretch out your hand to save us, that we may praise you for your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning. All right. What was that? Who? <laughs> Good morning. Are there announcements before I go? All right. into your bulletin, I'm sure you found the extra page about a Lenten discipline for this week, praying for the people of Ukraine and the soldiers of both sides. Um, you can find the charities you might want to contribute to the easy way. You don't have to type in that, that URL. You can go to the bulletin online and simply click as we were saying, who was I saying this to? Click, click, peace. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Amen. <laughs> Oh, the, Betty, do you have an announcement? Oh, yes. yes. This is a follow-up on Jeremy. So we may or may not be having um, Jason Jones talk later on. Oh. Yeah. You know what? Can I give you a microphone, or do you want to go up to oh, okay. so they can hear you on the live stream? So I don't think we'll be having in in-person um, stations, stations of the cross this year. And then we had the pandemic and all. But I did find something that kind of um, leads up with Joan's idea of um, the stations and um, mindfully celebrating um, every Friday through the Lenten season. And I looked up Stations of the Cross Episcopal and under videos there are really wonderful other Episcopal churches that have done this years before that actually do the Stations of the Cross. So if you're interested in a quiet time at your home, and celebrating the um, and walking through the stations, and I was also thinking of maybe um, doing something with the help of parishioners, of doing something for um, within our scope in our church um, that could either be put on um, on our Facebook. So if you're interested in anything like this, it would be our creation, and. Um, uh, just let me know. I don't know if they're having coffee hour or not, but um, plenty of you people know my name or you know my um, email address, so just give me a, a line. But if you are doing the stations, you are doing, okay. I do. Oh, then that's wonderful. <laughs> I don't know. What okay, forget it. <laughs> I didn't know that, um, Bill, so that's all right, so you'll be doing it on Friday nights? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I didn't mean to jumpstart this. Okay, all right. Well, that's right. Well, then we will have in service. So that's, mm. e that's even better, believe me. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Are there other announcements? Okay. So today is the first Sunday of the month. We have our, um, our contemporary music family service at 11.15 today. And uh, I am out of the office beginning tomorrow. <laughs> through next Monday. I'm taking a bit of a respite week. Uh, I need to, uh, I guess as a Lenten journey, I need to recharge, refuel. So I'm taking off this week, <laughs> um, which means I will not be here next Sunday. So we'll have a morning prayer Sunday, which the, our bishop actually suggested um, as something to do for all clergy in our diocese to take a respite week. So next Sunday is morning prayer Sunday. 9.30, same time. Uh, Chris Hawk will be leading us in morning prayer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and there will be no Thursday healing service this week. Our annual meeting is scheduled for Sunday, March 20th at 11 a.m. Uh, in person in our social hall. We'll also do our best to try to set up a Zoom. I can't promise that will work well, but we will give that a try if you're not comfortable going to the in-person meeting. And also, there are nomination forms back where you pick up your bulletin. There are four vestry positions that are um, that need to be filled. I believe every vestry person is running again. They're certainly eligible to run again. Um, and I think that's it. Am I forgetting something? I won't be here next Sunday either. either. She's taking <laughs> All right. But morning prayer can be read by any one person, any group of persons, lay people. And it is said that there is some, someone reading morning prayer sometime, I mean, anytime, somewhere in the world. So take part. Yeah. It might be a good thing to take up for Lent, actually, if you don't do morning prayer as a daily practice. It might be a really good Lenten discipline. Can I add yeah. one thing? We yeah. will have music next Sunday, too, oh, so yes. it's going to feel more similar to a regular church service. There's going to be pieces missing, but it will, it will feel like it's, it's going to be worth coming if you can come. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing.
blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. And on the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that was Cyril, our patron saint, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we sing. known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.